Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bowen. I'm a registered dietitian and homemaker. Today's an exciting day because I am going to share with you what is in my pantry. So if you've ever wondered what a registered dietitian keeps in her pantry, then you're gonna love this video. My intention with this video is to inspire and encourage you with procuring your own healthy foods for your pantry so that you can always make healthy meals at home. I firmly believe that having a well-stocked pantry is one of the keys to maintaining a healthy lifestyle. If we have a well-stocked pantry, we're always, we should always be able to cook something from scratch or something from ingredients that we have at home. And wherever you are in that journey, just be encouraged that it is a skill. And I didn't just wake up knowing how to do what I do. Um, I grew up <laughs> with a mom who made me cook and taught me all of this, all of these things from a very young age. So I've been cooking for 15 years and I am maybe a little bit further along in my journey than you are. But again, be inspired and be encouraged that you can achieve those goals if that's what you want to do. So without further ado, let's see what's behind the door. <laughs> Here we go. All right, welcome to my pantry. Here's kind of an overview of what things look like. We're gonna go through each shelf. Starting with my top shelf. So the big basket on the left has assorted canned fish, canned sardines, canned salmon, canned tuna. I typically stock those up when they go on sale, especially the canned tuna. And I just put them in there just because they add a lot of kind of clutter to the pantry and just keeping them concealed makes it look better. So that's what's in there and then I just pull it out as I need it and rotate it. So here you can see I have a can of salmon and then there is a large pack of sardines. I get the salmon from Aldi and I get the sardines from Costco. The sardines are currently on sale. So run, I know <laughs> you all want some sardines in your life. I'm moving over here we have all of the different types of oils that I use. So I keep a variety of oils on hand. They all serve a purpose. So I have coconut oil and behind that is ghee. These are both higher heat cooking oils. Coconut oil I like to use in making snacks that I don't bake. It just adds a lot of good flavor. Avocado oil is also a higher heat cooking oil that I use for frying, which I fry some things, but not very often. If I fry anything, I usually use avocado oil. I get this from Costco. I get both of these from Costco. This is a great olive oil because it is a cold extracted and it's 100% Italian olive oil. That's very important to get oil from a single origin. And then back there hiding is some balsamic vinegar. So all of those things are from Costco as well as the ghee. Keep the oils up high and away from heat just to protect the integrity of the oil. Shelf number two has a lot of our canned goods. So over here is like pasta sauces. I have the Rao's pasta sauce from Costco. I have an Aldi pasta sauce, a bolognese from Trader Joe's, and then a tomato basil uh, pasta sauce from Trader Joe's as well. So I have a very big variety of pasta sauce right now. I picked up a large case of the strained tomatoes. Those were from Azure Standard. I have a variety of other tomato products. I tend to use a lot of tomato products in cooking. So diced tomatoes, tomato paste, and then those are petite diced back there. This is all olives. We love black olives. They make good snacks. They make good additions to your cooking. Green chilies are something I use a lot in the winter. I can get those at Trader Joe's. Artichokes, I got those at Aldi, and then I think there's one back there from Trader Joe's too. This is a local jam, just kind of hanging out. This is all pumpkin. I tend to use a lot of pumpkin in my cooking and baking really throughout the year, so I kind of always have it on hand. Smoked oysters are something I always, always have. I usually get them at Trader Joe's because they have the best price. Oysters are a great source of zinc. They're an awesome protein source. They make just such a nutrient-rich snack, so I always try to keep those on hand. Here is some more of the canned fish that I use. Also, really great protein sources, great sources of omega-3s, especially the salmon. 
So I have the small cans of salmon and then the Safe Catch Ahi Yellowfin Tuna from Costco. It is, it is so good. I don't really like tuna, but this tuna is like eating steak. It's like equivalent kind of to like a tuna steak. It's just meaty and it doesn't have a super fishy flavor to me. But if you don't like fish, it probably does. But it is great. A few bone broths on hand because I just like to have them if I ever need them in a pinch or somebody gets sick and I want to make something really fast and I don't have any homemade broth on hand. So I keep a little bit on hand but not a ton because I make my own. These are all dehydrated vegetables, dehydrated mushrooms, dehydrated Swiss chard, and dehydrated celery. The next shelf is just like basic staple foods that you use in cooking or baking. So all of the tall half gallon jars in the back have flour or grains in them. So I have a spelt flour, a rye flour, a whole wheat pastry flour, oatmeal, and quinoa. I ran out of labels. <laughs> I keep a variety of flours on hand right now just because I'm experimenting with making sourdough bread and learning what flours we like the most and that sort of thing. So that's kind of why I have a variety. Rye flour I use to give my starter a little jump start when it needs to kind of ferment a little bit better. The shorter half gallon jars, starting over here, I have cocoa powder. This is baking powder. It's homemade baking powder. This is arrowroot starch, baking soda, coconut sugar, chocolate chips. They are the chocolate chips from Azure, and then there's also a bag of the cacao chips from Trader Joe's. They have zero sugar. They are very strong, so <laughs> um, I don't use them too often. Dates. I normally only keep one dried fruit on hand, but I didn't want to pass up the sale on the dried figs at Costco, so I'm planning to do some recipes with these to kind of use them up a little bit quicker, like some date bars or something like that. But we use a lot of figs and just dates for snacks because it's just a really easy way to pack a snack and it's also affordable. Coconut milk, coconut cream, I always have that on hand. There's just so many things you can do with it. You can make uh, chia pudding, you can make just all kinds of baking recipes. That's really what we use that for. Applesauce I also use for baking or if somebody gets sick, um, applesauce tends to be a really nice food for when you get sick. Okay, this shelf over here, this is all pasta. So we have the Jovial Cassava Spaghetti Pasta. That is a rice flour lasagna noodle pasta. That's a lentil pasta from Trader Joe's. And then you can see I have a huge stack of spaghetti squash. So just a variety of the pasta things. Over here, this bin is assorted things. That This is the Catalina Crunch Keto Cereal. That's something my husband likes because it's just a fast thing for him to pack himself for breakfast. The Parmesan cheese wisps, we love them. And the almond flour crackers from Costco. And then this, these are just kind of our snack bins. That's my chocolate stash. So some of my favorites are the Taza brand and then I have some from Christmas. That's Trader Joe's brand. And I also do love... The keto snaps from Costco are so good. They, if you like dark chocolate, like really strong, then this is for you. I always have the Archer Provisions grass-fed beef sticks on hand. They are such a great protein source, and you can toss them into your purse and take them along and all that good stuff. Down there are just pouches. Um, we're kind of phasing the pouches out. We're not really using them as much, but we have a few still left. The Serenity pouches are so well balanced. That's kind of one of the reasons I love them. They have a protein, fat, and carb, and they're just very balanced macronutrient wise. They are great. Getting down to the bottom. So, that is my excess organic, unbleached, all purpose flour that I use for making sourdough and other things of that nature. This is a box full of fresh, long term storage type of squash and potatoes. So I always try to keep a good amount of those on hand. These are just staple foods in our diet that I really enjoy having on hand. So regular potatoes, sweet potatoes, I have an acorn squash and a delicata squash. Those are bay leaves. Oh, <laughs> they fell. Um, bay leaves are good for keeping pests away. We don't have any pests, but you know, we don't want pests. So <laughs> I just toss some bay leaves in the pantry. This bin is full of smoothie supplies. So it has like 
protein powder, collagen powder, green powder, and MCT oil, things that we use when we make a smoothie. We just pull the bin out and make the smoothie. Getting down to the last of everything, there's actually a lot of stuff to go through in here. This is kind of the excess baking and other supplies that I use. Coconut, I use a lot of that. I bought a bunch because I was going to make coconut butter and never got to it. I have several bags of cassava flour. I use that for baking and tend to go through it pretty quickly. And I have not found a place to buy it in major bulk, so. This is extra cacao powder to refill my jar when I need to. This is the excess sugar to refill the jar. I have the keto pancake mix. There is an extra honey, an extra maple syrup. I've got some yeast in there just in case I ever need it. Cornstarch, tapioca starch, and powdered sugar. I don't use the cornstarch very often, but I keep it on hand. I mainly use arrowroot powder. And the last two things that I want to show you are the gamma sealed buckets. So I don't have any oxygen absorbers in these because these are buckets that we use pretty often, but I do like having the gamma seal on there just because it is airtight and makes it easier to get in and out of. This one is einkorn grain. This is the primary grain I use for making bread. I grind my own fresh and I use it to make sourdough rolls and cinnamon rolls and just anything that you would use wheat for. This bucket has just kind of like excess things again that I would use to fill up my jars. So I have oatmeal, I have a bag of quinoa down in there, there's an extra spaghetti box, beans, pasta, just things that I want to try to keep a little bit fresher in here versus just having them on the shelf. And then everything just gets rotated. So when the quinoa is empty, then I'll refill it with the one that's in here and so on. And I just keep a rotation going. Okay, so that is the main part of my dry food pantry. I do have a few other cabinets in my kitchen that hold various dry food items that I do want to show you because I feel that they are an extension of things that I regularly keep on hand in my pantry. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. Okay, so as you can see, I do keep flour on the counter and that's like where I cycle through the flour that I have. I just fill that up when I, with what's in the pantry when, I, when it's empty. This is my spice, vinegar, honey, and also some vegetable storage. So I keep my onions and garlic here away from the potatoes and squashes because they release gases that cause those things to ripen faster. So I keep all those up here. This is a little unorganized right now. I have a really hard time keeping my spice cabinet in order. It just gets so out of order and I hate refilling spice bottles, but I don't like buying a new jar every single time I need a spice. So. This is kind of a struggle area for me, but I need to get this reorganized. But basically, I keep all the basic spices on hand. Um, I can't think of anything really special that I have. I do have date syrup, which is kind of fun. I get that at Costco. They only have it like once a year. This is a local honey that just has a really nice flavor that we use for like tea and just any time that we want to taste our honey. And then that is actually just Costco honey that I transferred to a jar. And then I just keep every type of vinegar on hand, apple cider, white, there's a raspberry vinegar, um, there's a canning vinegar, I think that one's like a rice vinegar. I keep them all. I keep them all because they all contribute to cooking in different ways. I wanted to show you this because this has been kind of a seasonal thing for me, but I have been making freshly ground chai tea out of whole spices and it is so good. I just use ginger, peppercorns, star anise, clove, and cinnamon. I don't know where the cinnamon is right now, but I use all those, grind them up fresh, and mix them with rubious tea, and it is very delicious. So I've been keeping those out on the counter because I've been doing it almost every day, and it's really a treat. So I wanted to show you that. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you leave feeling ex inside. <laughs> I always accidentally say expired and i'm sorry <laughs> i hope you leave feeling inspired thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video